Hello and welcome. My name is Veronica Lundberg and I'm the marketing manager in Base Farm Sweden and your host during today's webinar. Uh, first, we have some practical things before we begin. As you probably already noticed, you are all muted during the webinar. If you have any questions or comments, you can please submit the questions via the questions panel and we will put together a Q&A after the webinar. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, as in sound or uh, if you can't connect, for example, <clears throat> let me know uh, either via the question function in this webinar or send an email to veronica.lundberg at basefarm.com. The presentation is in English since we have participants from different countries. And I also want you to note that today's presentation is being recorded and will be published on basefarm.com. You will get the link to the recording in an email. And that's about it from me now. Uh, so I hand over to Anna and Jan Arel in Oslo. Oh, thank you very much, Veronica. Um, and today's webinar about the Next Step Cloud Report. First, I would like to introduce us here in the studio in Oslo. My name is Anna Jäger. I'm the Vice President and Product Marketing Manager for Base Farm. And I also have here... Uh, Jan Aril Sigvartsen. Um, and I lead the Cloud Transformation and the consultant uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Base Farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been in, in Base Farm? I think yeah. it's around seven years now. Seven years, so okay. Almost a decade. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been through some some uh, transformations uh, I've been through in the past. Some transitions and some, some transformations, yes. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And I've been here for three years. So um, let's uh, look a little bit about Base Farm before we begin. I would like to say a few words for those of you who ha who doesn't do not know Base Farm. Uh, we're a leading European IT service provider with more than 500 employees in, in five countries. In our team, we have some of the best engineers and advisors in Europe, and we apply cloud data and security solutions to business challenges. Some of the things uh, we help our customers with uh, is cloud transformation that we're going to talk about today but also creating data-driven enterprise and smart security solutions for our customers. And that was the five sentences about Base Farm that I, that I was going to say today. And uh, let's look into the report, why we are here today. We're going to focus on the insights we've gotten from this survey. We did a survey uh, in May and June of uh, this year, and we sent out about 30 questions to IT professionals, and we now have over 200 respondents. And we created then a report, which we call the Next Step Cloud Report. From the report, we're going to go uh, deeper and look closer into the cloud adoption patterns and what the differences are depending on where you are on your adoption curve. We call this the cloud majority ladder. We're also going to go deeper into two other stages and Jan Ari later on will share some examples from real world uh, of uh, how he or we in Base Farm have helped uh, these companies on their uh, digital transformation. And you will also get some recommendations on what to do next and take your next step to the cloud. We did this survey because we wanted to investigate not only the cloud adoption, but also how far the companies uh, were in using new agile ways of working since moving to the cloud uh, is not only about the technical platforms and such things, it's more, it's, it's also a, very much about how to transform the organization and the IT departments in the company to support a more agile way of working and become more flexible. We asked a lot of questions to the respondents and one of the questions was which statement is closest to your company's current state and they got five different uh, statements that they could choose from and with the help from this 
uh, these statements, we could then group the companies into five different ladder levels. And we created then a cloud majority ladder out of, of the respondents. So when we started off, in the survey, 14% uh, of the respondents uh, say that they do not have a cloud comp any cloud computing plans today. This level, we call them that they are on the ground. The second statement, our company will begin or has just begun our cloud adoption journey. This level, we call it on the runway. And here we see 25.6% of the respondents from our survey. The third level, our company has a cloud roadmap and is moving forward. We have started moving some applications to the cloud as initial projects. We call this level ready for takeoff. 26.5% of the respondents in the survey say that they are in level three. In the cloud, and they, it's 15.8% in this survey, they say that our company has a cloud roadmap and we keep evolving. We have managed many challenges shifting legacy and or on-premise operations to the cloud. As a result, we have gained shorter time to market. Uh, and these companies perceive themselves they are in the cloud. But then finally, but not last, <laughs> yeah, it's 13% of the respondents who, who say that they are in orbit. Our company embrace the cloud fully. Cloud is not only a place, but also a foundation for a new agile way of working with development within the company. We are ahead of our competitors. And in, in, if we're going to give you a short summary in English, <laughs> um, we see that in level in orbit, there are more smaller and uh, maybe younger companies uh, with less than 100 employees. Around 50% of the, of the companies in orbit have less than 100 employees. On the ground, in the first level, we, we find companies from banking and public sector in majority. And their biggest concern uh, is rules and regulations. On level two, the executive management team is aware and competition is forcing them to act. On level three and four, we find many large corporations and level three are right in the middle of the digital transformation. They're running fast and they're changing and getting new competences into the company. On level four, they're using cloud, but now the focus is on improving methods of working and transform security to support this new way of working. Later, we're going to look closer into level two and level three because we have a majority, more than 50% of the respondents uh, are in level two and three from the survey. But before we do that, we will share some general insights from the survey. What are the drivers and concerns and barriers with cloud adoption? So we started off with looking at the drivers by analyzing this. And one of the major things here is that 61% of the respondents in average uh, are, are saying that uh, flexibility is the main driver for them going into the cloud. New demands increase the need for flexibility, but this this driver actually differs uh, very much if we look at from a if we look at this from a cloud majority perspective. How does it look? So here at the bottom, you see we have the different stages: on the ground, on the runway, taking off in the cloud, and orbit. And what we see here is that it's from level two and forward we see with higher flexibility is the main driver. Uh, and uh, this is, of course, level one. They, they haven't started using clouds, so they're not, there, they're not cloud ready yet. Do you see any interesting things here? Well, just to uh, repeat actually on what you said, because the, the first level they haven't discovered the flexibility yet, <laughs> so so they're 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 still on the ground. Mm. Um, 
when we also asked, I mean, we asked them many questions, okay, what are the drivers? And we saw this uh, um, as a main driver for everyone. But we also asked them, what is this, um, what about faster time to market? Uh, is that a driver? They could choose from many, many different statements. And here we see that faster time to market is peaking when you're in level three. And what does that mean? Well, uh, level three, they're in the middle of their digital transformation. They're, they're, they're taking off into the cloud. They tried out a lot of things. They, they're running fast. And uh, faster time to market seems to be like a, a focus area when you're in the middle of your digital transformation. Uh, when you're when you're moving into level four, they're not saying that this is a big driver any longer. Um, maybe the faster time to market is more of a buzzword when it comes to digital transformation. Yeah, I mean, it, but it could also be that uh, once you move into level four, uh, you're starting to become even more operationalized and industrialized, uh, and because of that, I mean. You'll be, will be uh, focusing on more automation and uh, getting more structures in place um, and um, being more uh, more governance and uh, and um, yeah driven by more operational uh, topics. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that could be why they, why it's the uh, dipping there. Dipping there. Yeah. 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 All right. So then we went into asking about the barriers. What are the barriers? Uh, for uh, your cloud adoption moving into the cloud. And here we have 68% uh, in average say that rules and regulations is the major barrier for them when it comes to public cloud. And this is regardless if the company use cloud or not. But let's look at it from a cloud majority perspective. How does it look? Uh, here we see some interesting things. Uh, and uh, it's a big barrier all over the place still in, in orbit, uh, 50%, more than 50% say that rules and regulations is a big barrier. It's lower in level two. This could indicate that the companies on the runway are focused on planning for the cloud, uh, but that one level on level three, you see rules and regulations as barrier when you need to take new services to the market. So you are more aware of rules and regulations when you come when you come to level three. So I would like to say that I think above fifty percent on level five when mm. you are a specialist, a cloud native, mm. it's quite a high number mm. because uh, um, these companies they're actually most likely pushing uh, putting their main cash cow. Uh, on this solution, mm -hmm. and 50% of them are having challenges actually operating maybe their core business, which I think is quite a high number. So it's uh, it's interesting mm -hmm. to see yeah. that uh, it's hitting even the number five um, ladder. All right, yeah. And then we also asked about the concerns. What are their main concerns? What do they think about when they when they go to <laughs> go to bed or when they <laughs> when they wake up in the morning? And uh, here, 43% say that security uh, as their biggest concern regarding public cloud. And then 37% say mixing cloud with existing structures and ways of working is a main uh, concern for them. And when we look at it from a uh, uh, cloud majority perspective, it's quite interesting that security before moving into the cloud is really something that you are very much concerned with. Uh, firewalls, you have the protection, you have the hardware protection as well. Uh, and then in level two and three, it goes down. Um, and we uh, see that this could uh, mean that you're so focused on, on actually planning for the cloud, trying out new things, running fast, so that security is not your top priority here. In level four, when you are out in the cloud, you need to, you see the need to actually start, or when the automation and operation mode of things gets there, uh, you need to transform security as well during during this uh, transition. 
And that's why we see that it's very important there. But in level two and three, what, what were their concerns, major concerns, then, that one, one would ask? And uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, mixing cloud with existing ways of working seems to be a bigger concern in level, when you're in level two and three. And that is, of course, interesting that, that it has to do with, you know, possibility to handle both um, the ITIL and mode one uh, ways of doing things, the traditional IT environments, and then moving into more agile and, um, and um, faster uh, ways of working. I think that the reason why it's such a big concern is that depending on how these uh, companies structure cloud teams. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you say, they're going to have a lot of uh, discussions regarding tooling, regarding processes, should we reuse what we have, should we build new things, and uh, mixing the workloads, it's, 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 uh, it's um, uh, normally, it's, it's a really, really big uh, uh, question uh, within mm -hmm. these two, two um, uh, steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we also wanted to understand a little bit more uh, how they are adopting new ways of working. So, we asked about uh, how many projects are staffed with teams with both development and operations, because that is one way of looking at, you know, agility uh, in our world. So, um, and here we see some interesting things. Uh, we have, of course, in when you're uh, cloud, in the cloud or in orbit, uh, all or most, more than 50% say that all or most of our projects are um, uh, working in DevOps, right? And uh, we also wanted to see, you know, who is actually saying few or none. In level two, you know, 47% say that they're not, they're working with DevOps hmm. for or very few of their projects are run with this. In the survey, it's only 16% that say that all our projects are uh, staffed with teams from both development and uh, operations, 16%. Uh, and uh, that when we do this survey next year, it's going to be a major increase in that figure because um, we do see that um, the uh, the companies running uh, fast needs to also work more together between uh, operations and uh, development. So uh, another way of looking at agile and so on is how fast can they deploy changes from code to production? And we ask them um, how fast they see that they uh, can deploy changes. Uh, and uh, when you're in orbit, 26.9% uh, say that it's less than one hour to deploy. Uh, and uh, we do have some 9%, um, 12% in level two, level three and four. But what is interesting here is that 13% in level one say that they can deploy fast. Yeah, and, and the reason for that is that actually, um, there is nothing wrong with existing IT environments. Uh, a lot of these systems have been optimized uh, and working really well for 20, 30 years. And uh, it is agile in its way, it's just uh, it, it's not agile in the same way with processes and tooling as you will have in the public cloud. It's, mm. it's a different set of working. Mm. Uh, but you can still uh, commit a release uh, in less than one hour even mm. in a traditional IT environment. Mm. So is during this transformation the biggest challenge is to get speed? Yeah, because right. you, you have to mm -hmm. find your new processes, your new mm -hmm. tooling, and, and kind of navigate through a lot of different types mm -hmm. of technology to establish uh, those release procedures uh, once again. All uh, right, but in, in a new way. In, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's also interesting that 14% uh, says, uh, in average, says that it takes uh, more than a month to deploy changes. So we, we do have some laggards there as well mm. who are not really <laughs> providing fast um, ways of working. Mm. Um, 
we also, of course, would like to understand a little bit how we are doing with uh, shadow IT in the organizations. And one way of finding that out was to ask a little bit of um, uh, where uh, things are stored. And of course, hardware is always easy to say that, yeah, I know where my infrastructure is, I know where it is. But in this survey, uh, the IT professional, 17% do not know where their CRM database is stored. CRM, the customer relationship management system. And uh, this could be that there is a lot of, of shadow IT that they are not involved with in IT department. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are using uh, large uh, softwares, global softwares, uh, where the CRM database it can be stored anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is something that maybe we should look into more in depth uh, since GDPR is coming up <laughs> next year and we have to comply everyone uh, on that. Yeah, so um, before we go into the customer cases and, and the, the interesting stuff, we also wanted to look into a little bit about the journey to the cloud. What are they using today and what do they see that they will start using more of uh, tomorrow and so we asked them uh, when it comes to use of public cloud private cloud outsourced or on-premise or physical service what do you use for more for half or more of your system so it's more than 50 percent we asked them how much they they use here and here it's it's a very uh, steep <laughs> decrease for physical servers and that was something we we uh, we force, foresee, and we we know this. It's not so revolutionary or or so. But what is interesting, and and you see the blue angle here with public cloud, that's increasing drastically. Of course, the shift comes sometime when you in you are in level three, level four, when when you use the cloud for more than half of your systems. What's interesting in this graph is that. Private cloud on-premise and private cloud outsourced, I mean, still is used, even though you're in, in uh, cloud native mode in level five. Uh, so a true hybrid and, and um, mixing clouds is, is what we see here. Hmm. Um, yeah, would you like to? Yeah, and actually looking at uh, the complete amount of workload, it's, it's actually uh, increasing quite a lot. Uh, the innovation, a lot of the innovation, most of the innovation is happening in the public cloud. However, uh, the workload in the private cloud, it will it doesn't disappear. Uh, actually, on the contrary, it mm -hmm. will actually, by bringing services to the public cloud, you will uh, actually increase also some workload in your private cloud, even though you get rid of some of the applications in your public private cloud today. So the total amount of workload actually ends up increasing mm -hmm. and you will still have both public cloud and private cloud to accommodate for that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, so we, we asked then what will be your next step in the survey? We asked them, okay, next step. What are you, what are you up to? What will you do next? And uh, one of the things, of course, start using public cloud uh, in level two. That's what we're what, what they want to do. Uh, we think that in level two, um, we see that management has woken up and they feel the threat from competition. Uh, and the competition is often, often faster, younger companies in level five. They see a need to start using public cloud as a way forward. Another area was how to manage legacy systems. Uh, we asked I mean, how many of the of the respondents saw that managing of legacy systems or transforming legacy systems to the cloud as the next step? And here, uh, the graph looks a bit different. Uh, and this has to do with. Would you like to comment? Or yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, once you move up the ladder, um, you get more and more focused on your existing workload because. Um, People are in, in level four. Uh, I mean, they still have their existing systems and they still have to ma maintain those. 
So when you're on level four, you have already dis discovered a lot of benefits uh, working in the public cloud and uh, perhaps uh, try to adopt those to your existing environment. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, you also, maybe you have to reuse your existing data from your data warehouse and maybe integrate it uh, with the, the uh, systems you put up in the public cloud, like a big data system, for instance. So it, the topic gets more and more um, uh, it gets more and more uh, discussed. How should you uh, actually uh, leverage your legacy uh, to get even more benefits into the cloud? Uh, and a part of that, of course, is then, yeah, should we shift some of this workload uh, into the cloud and uh, just uh, scrap it from our on-premise uh, environment? All right. So that's, um, that's, yeah, that's how we see. But still, of course, even though you're in level five, uh, we see that they are uh, also having a legacy, <laughs> even though they're cloud native, and uh, and that is interesting as well. Um, let's look at what they see as the future. How is the future? The trends? What what's happening in the future? Uh, and uh, here are the net figures, the net net figures. We. Uh, which means that we, we, everyone that said increase and we deducted the decrease figures from this. Of course, public cloud will increase, uh, in average is 72% that says that this will, they will increase the usage of public cloud. And uh, physical service will decrease, private cloud on-premise will decrease as well. But the private cloud outsourced uh, we see still some some increase in, and that could have with what you said before. I mean, in terms of that, that it will increase the total amount of workload, and and not everything is uh, is possible to store or operating in the public cloud. Yeah, and it depends on what kind of company you are, because for for some companies actually, uh, you will have a lot of more workload in your private cloud when you go to the public cloud, while for others maybe you will have less workload in your private cloud, but totally, uh, the number of, of workload, it, it increases. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, we are here mm -hmm. for the hybrid mm -hmm. uh, for quite some time, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, to summarize, uh, the move to the cloud will go faster and faster if you look at it from the answers in the survey. Uh, so uh, it's just, it's not a matter uh, if, it's, it's just how fast basically, and that's also why we are here. Um, but now we're going to look into a little bit more uh, into the ladder uh, and uh, on level two and three. We would like to deep dive a little bit and uh, share some, some experience that we have. So what was it now? On the runway, our company will begin or has just begun our cloud adoption journey. Customer demands and or competition force us to take the the step into the cloud. All right, uh, let's recap just a little bit uh, before. Uh, this group scored the highest in saying that business challenge was innovation and digital transformation. So they want to become more agile and fast and, uh, you know, get, get things out the door, right? And the second highest challenge was driving growth and profitability. That, that came on second place with 50% and saying that that is also a big challenge for them. So how are they going to do this? Um, let's see how others have done. Uh, the first case we would like to look into and share with you here is a, is a public transportation company, right? Um, and uh, what were their, what was their challenge initially or can you give us some background to this case? Yeah, maybe? I can. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to. I mean, so public transport, it's, uh, it's been around for quite a few years, I would say. Uh, so, yeah. so this is, uh, this is a very well um, um, working uh, company. Mm -hmm. um, they've been operating for a long, long time. They have a, a it's well working uh, IT environment. A smooth IT? Oh, it, it's, yeah. it's smooth and it's been optimized over many, 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 many mm -hmm. years. So, um, 
so the transportation, if it's a taxi or a train or, or whatever, like it, 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 it arrives uh, there and uh, the customer know uh, when it's there. So it's, 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 uh, it's proven. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, actually what um, is important for any public transportation company, um, not only transportation, but it's to be close to your clients, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, when you have clients ranging from uh, youngsters uh, to elderly people, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's quite a challenging audience. Mm -hmm. So uh, they needed to um, uh, support uh, both the ones that are not up to speed with technology, but also the most technology hungry uh, people you will find in the world. So, and we're pretty far on technology here in the Nordic. So, mm -hmm. so it's it's challenging for these guys, and um, they. Uh, so they wanted to make uh, more intelligent uh, end user services um, because uh, some of the clients, most of the clients, uh, do, they have cellulars, so smartphones uh, with, uh, with GPS tracking and gyros and uh, iris uh, detections and uh, well, a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and this just goes faster and faster on the consumer side. So um, their, their, their challenge was to uh, how uh, can we be closer to our clients and enable them to use their everyday technology and devices when using our services? We don't want to be a stranger. Uh, we want them to just recognize us, just walk onto the transportation, easy peasy, and um, suddenly you're there. And it can be everything from self-driving buses to to tracking uh, where these users are at a certain time to optimize traffic queues or, or wait a bit if you see that 50% of your regular customers are late for that particular bus. It could be many, many things. Now, the challenge, uh, the technical challenge is that once you start, uh, I would say, polluting your uh, existing uh, environment with a lot of uncertain data or a lot of data that will never be used, uh, the costs uh, increase a lot. And one thing is the cost, but also when you're trying to, trying to process that, uh, the cost gets even higher. So um, these guys, they didn't want to pollute a very well working IT environment with all these new types of services that require them to process a lot of data that maybe only 1% would actually be used. So again, um, they need to optimize their uh, their um, uh, the business uh, towards uh, the future needs and um, and uh, reach the whole audience. So Can I just ask. I mean, they they support m millions of, yes. of people every day, right? They, they do in, in their trains and buses, yes. and they have ticketing systems and ferries, and it's it's uh, ticketing systems and ah, uh, and so they... um, yeah, payment transactions, and it's 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 a lot of different things. Everything you need to basically get from from A to B. Uh, nice. So it's it's even uh, a fuel calculation. Uh, how far uh, how far can a certain uh, uh, means of transportation drive before we need to fuel it? it, it it's a lot of different things. Mm. Um, so on one side, mm. of course, is the end user experience. On the other side, is the cost for actually uh, having these great user experiences. Mm. Um, so. And um, well, uh, kind of the, just to jump into the bit of the conclusion. I mean, um, uh, like most companies, uh, they uh, did an assessment of the current environment, mm -hmm. and uh, they came to the conclusion that you know we we need to carve out an own specialist team to look at this. Okay. Um, so basically, um, how we are working with them, we are we are the ops in their DevOps, uh -huh. um, and we work with their innovation team. Um, we look at new technology uh, to see how we can get new cool features um, to their end clients and if it's actually possible to pull this into a production and industrialized environment because what's quite sad with innovation and great ideas is that most of it is never possible to put into production and that's statistically and that's okay. so our role in this whole uh, project uh, it's to it's to help them choosing the right types of technology. So uh, um, when they're working on this, maybe five years ahead before it's released to the public, uh, it goes much smoother into production. Um, because what's normally is, uh, happening with an IT project is that the developers, um, the, um, business developers, they have a lot of good ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, they develop it and, and they do all the features. 
and then it's going to be industrialized mm -hmm. and then you suddenly run into security governance compliance corporate compliance um, how should you maintain this how should we use the cheaper resources to maintain this than mm -hmm. the ones that actually made this and how do we exactly free up the brilliant minds that made these services onto new business areas mm. so they can start developing mm. more services for our clients. So, um, so we are uh, focusing on continuous delivery. Uh, they are doing proof of concepts, getting more funding from uh, uh, top management and rolling out feature by feature, step by step, gradually into operations. And well, that, and that gets, um, so the point is, uh, it gets uh, continuous delivery, mm -hmm. uh, where you continuously de are delivering value into the business. Um, and some of those parts are non-mission critical uh, features, mm -hmm. could be like only historical data, and some could touch the customer facing systems, and eventually, yeah. Can I, can I just ask a question there about like mission critical, why is it so important to to like start to plan for operations already, you know, when you start developing things. Because I mean, I worked with software development, and and you you really don't know where you will end up. Hmm. You don't know. You don't do. You do like uh, small iterations and customer value each time, and so. So why is it so important to, especially for mission critical, which we are the business we are in? Why is it so important to start plan for for operation things? Uh, early. That's a that's a great question because uh, normally operations would just slow down the innovation process, right? So yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what we hear about in mode one. But the the, the point is that um, you don't need a lot of ops focus in the beginning. Beginning, you will maybe have like twenty developers and like half an ops guy. Mm -hmm. However, if you know you have a two vendor strategy when you go into production, you, you may already two years up front mm -hmm. choose a language uh, to deploy uh, your um, infrastructure that mm -hmm. allows you to have that two vendor strategy without you having to rewrite 50% of what you have written. Mm -hmm. So by having a bit of ops early in the project, mm -hmm. uh, you will actually end up going fast to production uh, because you can industrialize your really, really cool features faster than if you would have to do a painful transition and transformation project in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually move faster into level four. Definitely. What you're saying, if you if you know already in level two, what 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 you're aiming for, and and uh, learn from that. Definitely, mm -hmm. and, right. and and we see that on some companies. So I'm going to come back to an example mm -hmm. where we could actually move a company from level two to level four in very short time mm -hmm. by by just adopting the process and how it works with this. So, uh, mm. ah, interesting. Come back to that. Yes. All right, uh, and the second second customer case uh, that we want to share here uh, is about a toll parking and traffic control. Um, it's a totally different. Well, it's not totally different. It has to do with uh, some things, but it's some some things close to transportation also. Uh, but but please, um, what what's what's the story here? What's what's the background of yeah. this company? What what are they doing? Yeah. So we we we've, we've had the roads and uh, roads and railways and the planes for quite some while, but um, and uh, toll and parking has been around for 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 some years. Um, so this company, they they are. Um, I think they are uh, they are almost 30 years old, they're older than 30 years. So again, um, they know toll, they know parking. There are uh, European, um, actually international vendors, so they have a footprint all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, do they sell to, to governments and to cities or so? Or yeah, the well, well, well these, uh, these guys, they, uh, they're a customer. Their main customer are actually parking companies mm -hmm. or the government or, 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 or the companies that actually operate the tolls. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, uh, they were, and, well, and they're doing this really well. They have a high quality uh, existing IT. Mm -hmm. Everything is right in a data warehouse. It's like a clockwork from Switzerland. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's really smooth. It, this is an ISV then? I mean, yeah, you yeah. can say it's like kind of an ISV, yeah. yes. Uh, you mm -hmm. could say that, uh, that's true. Um, now the, the challenge for, for, um, for the, let's say the parking industry, and I would take myself an example. Um, uh, so I'm a Norwegian, sometimes I like to go to Sweden, which is uh, go to the south uh, and mm -hmm. get some heat. 
Um, and uh, if to I Spain, to yeah. Spain, for example, instance, yeah, to Spain, not, for instance, not only to Gothenburg, yeah, to Spain, exactly. Yeah. And and I mean, uh, if if I park wrong or if I have to, I mean, uh, if if I get I have to um, complain on my parking, that that's a painful process for me. Mm -hmm. What would make me really happy is that if I went to the airport and 15 minutes before I parked. Uh, uh, I would get an SMS, for instance, uh, saying that if you park on this place instead of this place, we'll cut your parking in half, so we'll pay 50% less. Mm. Now, 1,000 crowns for me as a consumer, that's money I can spend on a beer in, in uh, Spain, yeah, 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 <laughs> or many beers, yeah, yeah. which would make me happy. Um, now, actually, for me, uh, the reason why I would get this SMS could be because the um, the local parking company needed to uh, take off and shovel snow from the space and the parking that I would normally park. So by them actually getting most clients out of that space, they will have lower costs because they could shovel all the snow mm -hmm. and shovel it less times than uh, if they had not mm -hmm. warned their clients. So it would be a good business case for them. The challenge for this particular company with a lot of history is that they were, chased, they were feeling competition from companies they maybe should not compete with. Mm -hmm. So um, they were in level five then, or I mean, they, they found some yeah, basically, some new, new, yeah, new start, startups and 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 uh, in, innovators and mm -hmm. disruptives mm -hmm. uh, that would make these great features for uh, for consumers like me. And mm -hmm. I would say, wow, I'm gonna use uh, these guys more often because mm -hmm. it's I have no hassle going to uh, Spain anymore. Yeah, it's a great user uh, experience, and I have more money mm -hmm. on beer. So, um, and the point being, um. So this this company they wanted to look at how how can we leverage all our history, how how do we cope with this? Do we change what we have? Mm, do we build something aside? How can we combine all our market knowledge with all the opportunities that exists in the public cloud area, um, and actually leap ahead in front of these startups? Mm -hmm. Um, so again, we, we were uh, having a lot of talks with them and uh, basically uh, together with them we set up a few proof of concepts uh, on how they could reuse data, maybe how they could track different users and how they can make end user services more attractive because for these people, um, if they can get their customers customer happy, mm. they will earn more money. Mm. Um, so, a lot of small iterations, uh, a lot of different proof of concepts, fail fast, uh, recalibrate, and, uh, recalibrate and, and try again, and uh, get more and more funding and eventually roll out these features through all your customer base. Mm -hmm. Um, did they did they also start with a small team like an incubator or or did they take another approach? What, yeah, yeah, they they, uh, they we we started with a small team, yes. Yeah. Um, and the developer team is is was crucial here because actually, uh, and we see this in more companies, mm -hmm. the business side uh, doesn't necessarily have enough competence yes yet um, to list the requirements on what the developers should make. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, for these people here, it's, it's crucial to get the developers um, uh, really in, in lead and developers uh, with good business sense as well because mm -hmm. they are actually the ones that can enable these services mm -hmm. because they know what is technically possible yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's how it is when new technology emerges. I mean, you have a few uh, little group of people uh, that really uh, can uh, connect the dots mm. uh, because it has not been standardized yet, and and uh, and again, that's uh, um, that's why they uh, pulled us in to have uh, um, a few of our architects mm. uh, covering the ops part. Yeah. Um, and then we, we do have a a customer case uh, written on uh, on this uh, customer actually, and and we will send it out after the webinar to to the audience as well. Um, so um, the uh, the next case here is an e-commerce and digital auction company. 
which is also interesting to look into in level two yeah. before we go into level three uh, and so on. We have 15 minutes left, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, this is a quite, quite interesting company because uh, they are very much on premise. Uh, they are extremely agile uh, and very technical capable of doing mostly almost anything on premise. So. Mm -hmm. Really, really uh, uh, strong technical environment, um, and uh, I mean, these guys they they live off digital auctions. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, marketing fast marketing campaigns is really important to them to get people into the auctions, and they are an international company. I right. think they are in 17 countries, mm -hmm. so they span across different cultures um, and, and different business uh, segments. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this, how, yeah. how is the digital auction and e-commerce, Is that do they, do they also handle the transactions then in the platform, or how does it work with, you know, uh, like PCI, DSS regulations, that's like the uh, the payment card yeah. industry regulations and stuff like that. Yeah, so so, they so have to... yeah, so these people they have they are both under uh, governmental law, mm -hmm. but in addition, uh, they also applied a lot of corporate regulations mm -hmm. because their brand is important to them. Mm -hmm. So security is ex extremely important uh, when you're handling uh, very expensive art objects mm -hmm. uh, or on the handling money. Yeah, and you all, they also need to handle the confidentiality of their clients. Mm -hmm. So, so this is this is a very security sensitive customer. Um, so, and what was yeah. the what was the history? Have we worked long with them, or what's the, the story with Base Farm? We worked with them for uh, for quite a long time, yeah. several several years. Um, so, so uh, on several business areas. So yeah. they are they are um, they are uh, a very much. Um, I would say a traditional uh, mm -hmm. customer, but but really really agile in in their uh, IT environment. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so what we what we were trying to look at is so how um, what what is actually really cool with this uh, client is that we could may we can we can enable a shift for them in less than four weeks that had a huge impact on their business. Um, and uh, since they are, they were really, really depending on the marketing campaigns to roll out fast. Um, so, when you're putting a marketing campaign, you need a landing page. Um, you'll need a, a, a domain name. You will need some DNS records, and you you, you need a certain set mm -hmm. to to um, support such a campaign. Mm -hmm. And, and that would normally take it. It was fast, uh, but it could be faster. Mm -hmm. Um, and the faster this campaign rolls out, uh, the more people that would go to their auctions. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we did a very technical assessment with them, with, together with the team, and we looked at the, we looked at the features uh, stuff, and we also looked at how we could operate this later. Um, so what's what's happening now is that the marketing people are can continuously just push out new com campaigns. Uh, without having to manual, manually or semi-manually uh, involve IT people. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we, we were doing something around DNS uh, in the public cloud, mm -hmm. so they could actually roll out their marketing campaigns 90% faster than before. So it decreased by 90%. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. uh, and, and basically the, the value for, for them is that they can uh, have more people in their um, in their uh, auctions, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can yeah. also be more agile when they have to change their marketing mm -hmm. campaigns during the campaign. Yeah. Are we? Um, are we? Are we also looking into uh, the legacy things for this client, or or what do you say? Yeah, is possible. Yeah, so so then that's, that's a very good point because uh, this was uh, this was quite um, uh, this is quite uh, uh, it, it is quite a news to this company that you know just this little project could impact this more this much yeah. um, so now we are of course then looking through uh, the whole infrastructure mm -hmm. to see are there any places uh, other play other other places that we could uh, leverage a public cloud strategy to to have the same effect mm -hmm. on their business mm -hmm. Um, so, so these guys, they like immediately went into the four level, so three level four. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it took almost no time. No time. Right. Um, mm. 
So that's oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Very interesting. So um, when you are in level two, what what would be our recommendations? What do we recommend? I mean, you get a lot of insights into the report, but maybe we can elaborate a little bit about the recommendations. Yeah. Um, if you should choose two things from this list, you know, to to really, you know, what 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 are the main things when you're in level two yeah. before you have really gotten into the cloud? We are on the runway and yeah. we want to tick off. So 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 based on experience from approximately 50 projects the last 15 months, um, I would say that um, uh, one of the key one of the key elements is to actually establish a special task force mm. uh, because most of these companies they have a well very well running business. It's running great, uh, and you should not necessarily try to pollute your existing environment. Mm -hmm. um, the task force can consist of one person, can be two. Uh, the important part is that it needs to be uh, your top skilled people mm -hmm. uh, that can uh, work both on a deep level but also on a broad level. Uh, those are hard people to find, but every company have those. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you if you don't have enough. Um, you should consider to, to ask yeah, someone to help you. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's kind of the, the statistics yeah, that yeah, we yeah. see of people that actually succeed. Um, so as a part of that, uh, you should really expect to try a lot of different things. You need to fail fast, retry, mm -hmm. fail fast, regroup, mm -hmm. try again, mm -hmm. try again, try again, because the technology level is moving so fast, uh, so you will need to fail uh, to be able to move on to the next ladder. So what's important then is to have many small iterations uh, and not wait for it to getting the results six months from now. Yeah. But this, uh, is, this is a bit of education also for that, the, those type of companies, I assume, because they're on level two here and is. they need to like learn, learn how to crawl before they can run, right? Yeah, it is. And mm -hmm. it's important to establish a, a kind of a, a, a culture mm -hmm. where you have continuous delivery. Mm -hmm. Uh, or else uh, you're just going to burn a lot of money mm -hmm. and, and you might even not get uh, anywhere. So, um, oh. yeah. Thank you. So now we're going to look into level three, um, ready for takeoff. And we have two um, e examples there that we want to share before we end this uh, webinar today. Our company has a cloud roadmap and is moving forward. Um, let's see. Uh, we have started moving some applications to the cloud and uh, as initial projects. And uh, right now, let's see what we have here. They have gained faster time to market and higher flexibility. Now the focus is on more secure, efficient, and automatic processes. DevOps is quite common for this group. Most projects are staffed with both development and operation skills. The IT department focus, uh, focus is uh, on developing new digital services, and infrastructure is bought as a service. The use of the public cloud increases significantly. Here is the major shift. They are in the middle of the trans transformation. They plan to do the last, last heavy lifting when moving legacy systems to the cloud. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about right now. And we have um, a case here from a financial service. It's actually a payment provider, yeah. right? Uh, What's the story there? Are they global operations, or what? What are they doing? Yeah, so they are, they are, uh, they are uh, getting global. Yes, and mm -hmm. uh, they are, they are global. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, they would also like to expand into new markets and more markets. Mm -hmm. um, so, and and I think it's quite cool that this is financial services because mm -hmm. these guys are actually they are pretty far ahead on part of their business. Uh, but they are operating in a hybrid environment. Uh, they have a traditional environment, mm -hmm. you know, PCI DSS and all the security you can imagine, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really secure and stable. On the other on on the other hand, they are extremely um, innovative. So for me, as a consumer, when I go to a website and I just uh, wanna click, click, click and uh, buy without uh, having to type my credit card or just buy, and mm -hmm. just everything is being fixed. And if I don't like the things that I bought, I can just return it. Mm. You no, know, as a consumer, that's great. From a systems point of view, it's actually a lot of transactions going there between the store and the payment provider mm. and the bank. And mm. these guys, they just fixed it. So they have uh, environments both in the public cloud and on premise, um, and uh, they are becoming a victim of their own success mm -hmm. because they are good. Uh, the consumers that are using these stores that mm. have this payment mm. provider. Mm. They are loving it. Yeah. Uh, getting really good feedback. So they're getting more success, more and more and more success. Mm -hmm. And when you get more success, 
eventually you will run into more and more operational topics. Because the bigger footprint is, the more you will start thinking about uh, security, rules and legal relations. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my head developer is still involved when I upgrade the software because he actually wrote the features and it's really good, but he needs to be involved and we are having a bit of growing pains to reach level four and level five. So mm -hmm. um, really, 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 um, uh, really smart uh, people, but but they are they are being victims of their own success. At the same time, uh, they are looking to shift some of their uh, legacy into the cloud because mm -hmm. they've been in the cloud for some time, um, and they know which benefits they're going to get. So they would like to take some of the old legacy and actually shift it there. Um, and um, yeah, working together with them on that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, what we're what's what they what you're doing and they wanted uh, they're looking for automation yeah and standardization the, yeah and the reason for that I mean uh, the e-commerce uh, business uh, they were well, black Friday is coming up mm. and how do you prepare for black Friday mm. and normally that's a, that's like a, a lot of preparations mm. for many corporations around the world and I mean if you could automate all of those uh, um, automate a lot of those changes mm you would gain a lot of time. What's happening now on this level is that to make these changes, you need to maybe use your best people, the people that actually wrote the features. Oh. Um, and uh, that's holding up a lot of time to innovate. It's holding up a lot of, uh, a lot of time they could be using to, to, um, uh, to gain uh, new features to the market. Uh, so on level three, um, they, they are looking to automate a lot of these things so they could scale faster mm. or, or scale down faster mm. because it can be about covering new markets fast or actually having cost control. So scaling down everything when you need it. Mm. And if you haven't adopted the right tools and languages to do that uh, in uh, level two, mm. uh, it's actually can be quite a, a process of doing this in level three. So right. that's right. interesting. Um, yeah. How we're helping them to take the next step there, free up existing developer resources to do more innovation. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we are again we're the ops in their DevOps, and mm -hmm. and I mean just to be clear on that, uh, DevOps for us is it's not about how fast you release; it's about having developer and operations people uh, in the same room, physical or virtual, mm -hmm. sharing the same vision, same sharing the same goals. That's mm -hmm. that's how we we're we're working with this. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the final customer case here is an e-commerce uh, global vendor. We will go very very quickly through this because we just have a few minutes more uh, before we sum up. Uh, but um, they were yeah, so they they've been in the market for 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 decades. Yeah, um, doing hybrid uh, already in the public cloud um, and uh, and uh, thinking that well we we could do this better um, and facing competition. And uh, seeing that, well, we have to decrease our cost, optimize our cost. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also hoping by doing that, we can get access to new features. So uh, long story short, uh, we have helped them to implement a multi vendor cloud strategy mm -hmm. to enable the best of breed of both features, but also to put the workload where it uh, best fits. So. Uh, Right now, we're seeing like a 40, 50 percent decrease in cloud spending, mm -hmm. which we think is 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 good. And I mean, it's nothing wrong with the different uh, cloud services. It's just that some cloud of services are better uh, suited for some types of workload, mm -hmm. while others uh, have their strong sites on other workloads. Mm -hmm. Um, and they also got an access to more features than before, mm -hmm. and um, well, they are they are telling us now that they are they are leaping a bit ahead of competition again because mm -hmm. they can develop new services faster and reach new markets. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, Honore. <laughs> that was that was the speediest <laughs> presentation ever. Uh, we will, of course, you will, we will share this with you, and you can learn more from from uh, talking to us in Base Farm. But. Uh, uh, do you have some recommendations when you are in level three? What do we say? What, just pinpoint one thing. We don't have time for more. Yeah, I'm so sorry. very, 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 very fast. Um, or kind of fast. Um, mm -hmm. when you when you when you start innovation, you are you are technology driven. You look at feature, buying technology. Mm -hmm. When you get on level three, you should start becoming more agnostic about technology. Yeah. And 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 really think about okay. Um, should I go multi-vendor? How, how should I 
how, how should I um, uh, how should that be less technology driven? Mm -hmm. uh, so we recommend being yeah understanding to be cloud agnostic. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, one of the main recommendations and yeah. and really look at the automation. Automation and cloud agnostic. Yes. Thank you very much. So uh, I would like to summarize a little bit here at the end. Uh, we're very happy to have shared some insights from uh, this cloud report with you today and uh, hope that this has given you some inspiration and some thoughts and some recommendations of what to do next. Uh, and uh, you also heard some real life examples and you can t of course contact us and get more in-depth information around that. Uh, we always want to improve here in Base Farms so um, after this webinar you will receive a, um, a survey, a short survey uh, of what you thought about this webinar and I hope that you can, uh, would be glad if you could fill that in. We in Base Farm uh, have helped companies in different stages on this cloud adoption journey and you're more than welcome to contact us if you have any questions or would like to discuss how you can take the next step to the cloud. If you haven't read the report, go to uh, cloudreport.basefarm.com or contact us. Uh, and we also do like two hour cloud workshop just to brainstorm, just to kick off um, the, the, to kick off this uh, work in your company and, or to benchmark where you are on the adoption journey. So that's all from uh, us in Oslo. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Jan-Arild.